Can okay, you Melissa, hear me? can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, sorry for the delay, but we're uh, uh, alternating between using iPhones as a hotspot and a satellite connection. So uh, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, delayed at our end because the signal has to go an extra 48,000 miles. Uh, Melissa, Melissa, go ahead and put your PowerPoint up. Uh, Melissa Armo founded the Stock Swoosh LLC in December 2012. Stock Swoosh LLC is an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed for se several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008, a self-taught trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. Melissa Armo founded Stock Swoosh LLC uh, in December 2012. The stock, let's see, okay, we got all this. So uh, I see how to short for fast profits. Uh, Melissa, you have the floor. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Thank you so much, and you John. have until go ahead. and you have until five minutes before the hour. Okay, great. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here in New York City. Glad to be with you today. Interesting day in the market. We had some economic news today. And it's gonna be an exciting fall to trade. And for me, it's gonna be my first fall here along Central Park. I am extremely excited. In fact, we're supposed to have weather in the 50s this weekend, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm happy to be here with you today to talk about stocks, to talk about gaps, and to talk about shorting and of course making money because that is the reason that we trade. Trading is fun, but it's not fun if you're losing. It's only fun if you're winning. So today we're gonna to talk about a couple of things and I'll tell you what we did today. So we're gonna talk about how to short for fast profits. And if you have questions, this is me. Some of you have seen me already on TV. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. Probably the best place to follow me, though, is YouTube, where I put videos of the live trading room, and then when I'm on TV, I have my clips on there as well. So let's get right into it. Trading is a great job. It's really, really a great job if you could do it and make money consistently. So, uh, you know, if you've traded, if you've been trading, if you've been at this for a long time, you know you can make money in trades. But it's the consistency that people really tend to lack. So I realized a very, very long time ago that you could make a lot of money trading shorting. And then that kind of was what I stuck on ever since the beginning. Of course, when I took that first trade, when I shorted, and I made money, I didn't know what I was doing, okay? And then it took me about three years to develop my own system. I had always had a plan of action that I wanted to trade though for my career because I was doing mortgages for a long time and the mortgage industry was starting to turn and starting to fail. And I had to work even harder to make the same amount of money or even more. And I just didn't see the longevity in the industry. And I think today's world in today's age, a lot of people are frustrated with their employment even if they're getting raises, they're working harder, and they're just not seeing the leg up that they used to see. Of course, everything is costing more now. We're in an economy where things are costing more. It's not only inflation, it's also something called shrinkflation. It's interesting, I was talking about this in the trading room this morning. I went to the grocery store over the weekend and bought some things that I normally get, and they're smaller, and they cost more, and they're smaller size. So. We're in a world where I don't really think some prices of things are ever going to go back down again. So consequently, what do we have to do? We have to make more money. So you can trade full time. You can trade part time. You can trade on the side. You could do options. I trade options. You could have a full time job and do options on the side. You can put the trade on in the morning. Again, a short, a put is a short as an options trade. You could put a trade on in the morning 
and then you can put an immediate sell order and you don't even have to watch the trade. So there's lots and lots of ways to short day trades, swing trades, and options as puts, which we're gonna talk about today as well. But you have one goal when you trade, one, and that's to make money. And again, a lot of people wanna trade the market, but they just don't know how to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Here's our results, this is our stats through the end of August. I, I took the last week and a half off because it's my birthday. So I have the stats in here through the end of August. So far the year to date, this is with an average risk of about $2,800 per trade. We're at $417,937 for the year. Most of these trades are shorts. These are day trades. What do I mean by a day trade? These are trades on margin. You would have to have a margin account to do these trades. That means if you have a retail brokerage account, you would need to have a minimum of 25,000 and you would get four to one margin. If you don't, you can open up a prop account, which you can open up some prop accounts with a minimum of $2,500 and get 10 to one margin, or you can trade options with a cash account with less than 25,000, and then you can buy a put. This is the uh, results I have in Options Newsletter. We will talk about some of those trades. This is an alert service, a newsletter service, where the trades are sent to you to your email in live time. I'm risking more in my options trades. Why? Because I want to be able to hold overnight. I want to be able to take more size. I'm risking an average of $8,000 a trade in my options. You do not have to do that. You could risk less money. You could risk $100 a trade. Some of the trades you won't be able to do if you do that. I would say 500 is probably a good number. We will talk about some beginner uh, options trades as well. But so far, year to date, 936, 895 for the year so far. Again, this is with an average risk of $8,000 per trade. If you wanna be in and out of options constantly, you either need a cash account or you need a margin account to do options as well. So trading requires a positive attitude. And as much as I consider myself a positive person, I have found throughout the years, ever since I started the stock swoosh, which was like John said, it was in 2012, a lot of people, start trading, they're very optimistic, but then they turn very, very negative, very, very quickly. And, and by people, I mean people that attempt to trade. People lose money trading or take classes, don't learn how to make money trading, think that they're going to, and then they start to go negative. Know that when you're thinking negative, you're actually working against yourself. So you're not helping yourself when you're thinking negative. So as hard as it may be to think positive, uh, even if you're not having a good week, the fact is you must constantly be thinking positive for yourself and not thinking negative because you're working against yourself. If you have a positive attitude trading, you will be able to turn whatever situation you're in, whatever negative situation or bad trade you're in or bad experience you're having doing a certain strategy, you'll be able to turn it around. You'll be able to find your way to a strategy or a system or a mentor or a good trade that will be able to turn your situation around. It's very easy to go into that negative attitude. And again, one of the things that I, I have against some of these large chat rooms, these free chat rooms like the Reddit chat rooms is, they tend to be like a, like a pot of just people talking and they can grow very, very negative, where people call a wallow in their own you know, self depreciation and negativity. It's not gonna help you. Trading is an individual activity. It requires your own entrepreneurial spirit where you're really working for yourself. Why it's great to commiserate with people and it makes you maybe feel better in the moment. It's not gonna get you success that you want and quite frankly, that you deserve. If you've been working at this hard for a number of years and you've spent money trading or on classes, you deserve to be successful if you continue to persevere and stick with it. And so my job as a leader, as a mentor, um, running the stock swoosh is to help teach people my strategy so that they can be successful and then also help them to create a positive attitude and framework for them to be successful on their own. Because I teach everything in the class that you could do it on your own, but of course, if you come and you trade with me, you can take my trades the way that I'm calling the trades live in the room. You could take the trades with me live. Today we shorted Apple. You can take a look at it. I did plop that in here. Uh, we will talk about that today. Apple is falling. Apple fell yesterday. We also shorted Apple last week. So that that that's Apple's lower. I mean, Apple's just lower. But in order to become successful, you need a system and you need a niche, okay? 
And again, that's something that it takes some time for some people to really figure out what that niche is. For me, the shorting part of it and the fast trades part of it is it. But you can make money in the market. Why People do it all the time. They do it all the time. Except for not everyone consistently makes money. And again, it's because they don't stay on top of one thing or whatever they're doing doesn't work consistently. May work one day, not the next. May work one week, not the next. If you went long the market in 2021 and bought every dip, you made money. That didn't work in 2022 and it's not working in 2023, okay? But for every winner, there's one loser. And that's, that's the bugaboo. That's trading, okay? It's a zero-sum game. It's not like anybody's going out and making something. You're not... You're not like investing in something and getting something out of it when you take a trade. This is not long-term investing. This is shorting the stock, getting in, getting out, buying a stock, getting in, getting out for a couple of minutes or if you're doing an option for a couple of hours or a couple of days. I'm doing short-term options. I'm doing weekly options. I just did some trades today out till next Friday. That's like a long time for me to do an options trade, like a week and a half. But you need a good system to succeed. You have to follow it daily. That's very, very important, and you can't veer off of it. So if you decide to come and learn what I know, if, you're, if your goal is to be successful and really stick with it, you have to be targeted one thing, one trade a day, two trades a day, one thing, one strategy, one focus. And for me, it is gaps, and particularly shorting. I'm looking to focus on the fast moves, fast money. And for me, that's volatility. Again. You're seeing this this whole year, quite frankly. We had economic data this morning that was bad, and then the market was up. Market was down this morning, then it reversed, then it was up. We The Fed is meeting next week. That's going to create volatility, too. Volatility is fabulous. Volatility can be your friend if you know how to play it and if you know how to make money in it. And, of course, it's the idea of the fast moves and the fast money. The one that we did yesterday was Oracle. This was a really good one. Again, this was a short so let's go over here briefly, what is a gap? A gap is when a stock or the market gaps and closes at one price on four o'clock Eastern time, the stock market closes and opens at a different price at 9.30 the next morning. Things can gap up, things can gap down. Okay, let's talk about Oracle. And again, Oracle was up here, snug as a bug. It was around 126.25-ish. Then, that was four o'clock, this is one minute, open here at 9.30, okay, this was 9.11, this was 9.12, open down here around 1.11 and change. Fell, dropped, boom, fell, continued, broke, came all the way down here, broke 107 and change. So this is a move you could have done, you could have got in, got out, boom, done, as a day train, could have done as an option, could have got in, got out, could have got in, got a held it. I don't know where this is right now. But this was a fast move. This was a short. This was a gap. Okay. And that was yesterday, 912. So again, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. Simple. Stocks gap most every single day. Not every gap is a good gap or what I call a golden gap. It's like finding gold in the market because if you find it, you can play it and you can make money. Oracle is a good example. Apple's a good example today. So I'm looking for gaps that are predictable. Not every gap is predictable. Otherwise, I could do 500 trades a day. I could do every gap that's out there. I, I can't. They're not all predictable. So how do I find the ones that are predictable, which I call golden gaps? I, I have a rating system. This is what should come and learn from me. This is where the consistency comes from what I do. I don't know if any of you, again, I appear on television. I don't know if any of you watch Kramer. He's on CNBC. He's had his own show for like 25 years. He doesn't have a consistent strategy that you could apply and say, well, I'm going to buy this stock or short this stock. Kramer just says, well, based on the fundamentals or based on this news, do, 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 do. He, he doesn't have anything that you can take, learn it, apply, and then come out with the same conclusion as him. So he talks and says, I think this, I think that. That's very all over the place, okay? The whole point of trading is to take away the equation of the willy-nilly of it because that's where you get sucked into it, where your emotions can take hold of you, and then you're not making good decisions, okay? And then you're not applying any consistent standards, okay? So again, if you tried to come up with the same conclusions or stock picks as Kramer, you would not be able to do that. If you come and take my class, you would be able to come up with the same conclusions that I came up with via, for example, Oracle. Oh, Oracle was a good gap. Oracle 
was something that was going to fall, continue lower in the gap, something you could short, okay, or buy a put in it. Again, what is a gap? Let's just briefly go over this. The market fell last week. Here was the SPY. SPY close here, gap down. SPY close here at 4 o'clock, open at 9.30, drop, fell, boom, snug as above. Fell again, okay? This is actually a gap down. Even though we're reversed here on this particular day, it was the 7th, it actually gapped down. That is a SPY. Here's the Oracle on the daily. Again, closed up here at 4 o'clock, gapped down here and opened at 9.30, rallied, fell, dropped, okay? That was yesterday on the 12th. So this is a gap. So I'm looking for momentum in the gap. I'm looking for momentum. If I see the momentum, I can make money. And then I also wanted to go fast because fast is good. Then I don't have to worry about economic data. I don't have to worry about something that may happen overseas. There's many, many things that could affect the market during the trading day, even past 10 a.m. when most data is out. And when you think about it, if you're looking for momentum, it helps you whether you're trading small size or large size. Obviously, everyone wants to trade size. Everyone wants to make more money than they're making. Even if you're making money trading, I'm sure you want to make more. It's always the case. That will always be the case. That's fine. That's great. Let that motivate you to trade. But you have what you have and you have to take it and you have to use it. If you have a small account and you can only trade options, you can open up a, an options account with $2,000 and open it up as a cash account. You can't risk $2,000 a trade. That would be crazy. You take the amount of money you have and divide it up so that you can trade and continue and grow the $2,000 into $5,000 and grow that $5,000 into $10,000 and so on and so forth. But the whole point of momentum is that you can take a $2,000 account and create it so that you can grow it up to double it and triple it and so, so on and so forth. So momentum really helps you because it helps you grow your account faster, whether you have a beginner size or whether you have a mid-size account or whether you have a larger size account. It doesn't matter if you're getting momentum, like we saw in the Oracle, that was a nice move. The stock dropped big. And again, it happened fast. It happened in one day, no matter how you played it, that helps you grow your account. So Obviously, if you know you, you have a thousand shares of something, if you can make a thousand dollars, that's a lot, that's a lot better than risking a thousand dollars and making a hundred. So I do not scalp my trades. I'm looking for big moves for momentum. And again, I was talking about volatility, which is very very important too. But the key to day trading stocks successfully is really using a system. And getting back to my example of Kramer, really Kramer doesn't have a system. So having a system is important. Many people trade the stock market and do not have a system at all. Then there's people that have a system, but the system does not consistently work. It may work sometimes, again, in certain market conditions where you're buying the dips and everything's great and everything's moving higher and you've got the market moving stocks higher, but it, it doesn't work consistently that way. And if buying the dip worked all the time or even most of the time, no one would ever lose money in the market because that's very easy to do. You could be a, a third grader and look at something and say, I'm going to buy this dip. You could know nothing about charts or stocks or anything at all and do it. So it's just not a consistent way to make money trading. So trading a system that sets up daily with a high level of predictability in the directional move is number one what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm trying to find that. And again, I'm veering to the short side. And then I'm also looking to do things independently of the market where I don't need the market. Now, I read the market correctly a lot, but I don't get the market right all the time. So ultimately... When I'm looking for something, I'm trying to not need the market for the move. Now, there are times where I get the market's help, okay, where the market helps me get a larger move if I'm shorting a stock or something. But I prefer to not need the market when I'm making trading decisions because the market can be difficult to, to read or predict. But getting back to what I was saying about systems, okay, or strategies, success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system, and that's why it's so important to have one. For me, it's shorting, and particularly for me, it's gaps. But ultimately, if you really want to do this for a career, if you really want to be successful doing this, you really do need a niche. And if you want to trade like everyone else, you're going to lose because most people lose trading. Part of it is, as I was saying before, with the positive or negative attitude, part of that is people have a lot of emotions surrounding money. And they tend to fear very easily in the fear for, or they veer in the fearful direction of the negative direction as soon as they lose. Like you'll see people all the time talking about where they double down and they risk more money if they're in the hole and then they blow up their whole account and they have to refund it and all of that. 
that's just negative, 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 negative. And it's not thinking in a, in a very disciplined manner or uh, even normal behavior that you would think about it. It's more like a gambling behavior. And training, you should look at training as something that you're doing, like you're running a business, not like it's gambling. But again, for me, the reason that I decided to focus on gas because was focusing on reading what institutions were doing in stocks. And then they were making big moves in stocks with volume and volatility. It allowed me to take trades and have big moves in stocks. And sometimes I trade the market. Sometimes I do the ETFs in the market. But not all gaps, quite frankly, are made with institutional money. So I developed a system and a method to find the ones that were and that would make it less confusing for me and that would help me predict where something was going to go. And then I would be able to take the trade. And I don't take the trades in the pre-market. I take the trades after the open. So I'm doing day trades and I'm also doing options. Now, here was BA. Again, this was a nice move. Stock close here, gap down, fell. This was a gap down here in BA, actually continued here the second day, if you were still in it, then it continued here, boom. I didn't look at where this is at this morning to see where this is at, but the airlines this morning were down. Here was the Apple. We actually did this last week. We did an option in this last week. Stock close here, gap down. I called the 180 puts, fell, fell off a cliff, gap down here, like very far under the strike. Really nice trade, broke 175, and that was an options trade. Now, we were talking about today, we did this today here, and this is falling today. So again, we've been shorting, shorting Apple. So how can you make money shorting? You make money when the stock price drops. Again, this is my niche. A lot of people prefer to go long because it sounds easy, because it makes sense, but quite frankly, shorting makes a lot of sense too. Who can short? Anyone can short, as long as you have an account set up to short. And if you don't, you call your broker and set it up. Buying a put is shorting a stock, okay? And then you sell it to exit it to make money. If you're shorting it on margin, you need to have your account set up to short and as a margin account. But both retail traders and professional traders both can short. And one of the reasons that I like shorting is because when selling comes into a stock or the market, it happens fast. It's panic that happens, and it's usually happening early, and it's usually happening quick, and it can happen big. And so, again, if someone said you can make $1,000 in five minutes or $1,000 in five days, what would you prefer? You'd rather make the money fast, 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 fast. So this was the week before I was off for the holiday, uh, for Labor Day and my birthday. This is a one week of trades. These were all day trades. I'm going to go over the trades here. 11965 Monday, we had no trades. This is the week of the 21st. Tuesday, we made 39.65, Wednesday, 3,200, Thursday, 25.50, and Friday, 22.50. Let's go over every trade. So the first day of the week, we didn't do anything. There was no trades. There was nothing to do. There was nothing that rated per my system. And so I just lectured, and we didn't do anything. The 22nd, uh, we did DKS. Oh, shoot. This isn't the right chart in here. Uh -huh. This is the wrong chart. This is Tesla. <laughs> I'm just seeing this now. Shoot, I'll have to bring it up and show you in a minute. Anyways, we did this on the 22nd. It was DKS. Entry was 115.95. Shares were 1,300. Risk was 33.15. Eggs was 112.90. Profit was 39.65. This is not the chart of DKS. This is a chart of Tesla. I'll have to show you that when I'm done because I can't flip back and forth of the PowerPoint if I have time. And then we'll look at the market actually when I'm done. But on 822, if you want to pull it up yourself, we did DKS. Um, this one is Foot Locker. Here, Foot Locker we did on the 23rd. Stock close here, gap down, we shorted it. Right here. Entry was 1525, 8,000 shares, risk was 2800, exited at 1485. This stock doesn't move that much. If you know it, if you understand it, we got in and out, that was done, and boom. Again, down here's the volume. Stock closed up here around 23, open in the morning, under 17. So this was a day trade, this was a margin, this was cheap. This was cheap, again, you don't have to have a crazy huge account to do some of these trades. Here was DLTR, entry was 129.90, 1,500 shares, risk was 3,300, exit at 128.20, this was 824. I could have held this longer. I could have held this a lot longer. So anyways, this closed up here around 142 and changed, opened here around 130 ish we shorted this i just want to show you where this went 
it came all the way down here. This was the 24th. It came down to 122 and change. We, I, I could have got out. I could have just held this all day. But I, I do what I do when I get in and out fast. I made 25.50. And then on the 25th, we did Marvell. 54.10. Shares was 2,500. Risk was 3,000. Exit was 53.20. It was almost a dollar. Trying to get a dollar. Most of the trades that I take, 22.50. Uh, this was here. Stock close here, gap down. We shorted it. This was the Marvell. So anyways, that was a good week. That was a good week. And if I have time at the end, I'll go up and I'll pull up the DKS and show you that, which was the Tuesday. But there are times when I don't have a gap that rates good, then the idea is you do nothing. And that's difficult for people. But you've got to do that because you have to apply the system consistently. Now, we did do some puts. Uh, we did some puts last week, but this was August. I just want to show you the 440 put that we did on the 16th in the SPY. It expired on the 25th. Again, a week and a half is probably the longest I'll do something out. This was cheap. This was cheap through the market at 330, the 16th. Let me show you the chart first. Here, we did it here. Fell, gap down, you would exit it. So we did this here, you see with the 440, gap down the next day here, see where this was. So again, I will do something and then I could get out the same day or I might hold it. This was way through the strike, so I held it, you exit here. So you exit the gap down, but actually even if you exited it on this day, you were still through the strike. But this is a larger risk for me. You can risk less, you could do one contract. We're gonna go over a beginner in a minute. 82.50 risk, you could have made 10,500, 127% return on investment. This is getting out of the trade the following day. So I call this kind of late, actually, 111. I saw we were going to continue to fall into the close and then the next day. So I called that kind of late. This was, again, the 16th. If you risked four contracts, you could have made 1680. So you see how you can take, like if you had, for example, say a $10,000 account, $10,000 options account on cash, you could have done this trade. And then you could have made, again, almost 20% of your account in one trade overnight so you would have had to take it and hold it and exit it then the second day but again you can do that if you have it set up as a cash account so that is how you grow your account that is how you do it again it's not about going hog wild in something or risking more than you can afford like i wouldn't take a trade and risk a thousand dollars plus if you only have 2500 in an account you have to be very cautious about that but that is a fast move for an option straight. And again, f short moves happen fast. Why? Because of selling. Because of selling pressure, because of panic. Apple's a good example. If you're a long Apple and it fell off a planet yesterday and today, you would panic. Okay, you would be panicking. Again, they had their conference yesterday. I didn't follow the whole thing. This thing, that thing. They're really not coming up with any new things when they're doing their new product launches every year. It's a little bit new, a little bit that. It's pretty much the same thing for more money. So the stock fell. You're also seeing a fall off in that sector lately, and that creates panic. Panic is fear. Fear creates selling. So you're basically shorting, okay? You're shorting the panic of something. And that's what allows you to get that kind of big momentum. And obviously, I'm looking for a dollar, but many of these trades went more than a buck. So whether you want to hold something or get out of half or hold the rest is up to you. So how do I find the best shorts daily? How do I make the picks? I use my rating system to make the picks. This is the system. This is what you've learned in the class. Again, I use Kramer as an example because my system is something that you can learn. It's a 26-point rating system. If the gap rates 20 points or more, I'll take it in the direction of the gap. In the case of the gap downs, we're shorting. I'm never going long a gap down. Again, we were short the market last week into the gap down. Exited trains, got out of the puts. The market lifted. I did not go long that. I did not go long that. Okay, so I'm looking to follow what the institutional money is doing, preferably in the gap. Could be in the live day like the Oracle yesterday. Could be overnight. Gaps are created with large institutional money, and that is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing, and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. The SPY, again, is a great example of that last week because of the way that we sold off. 
and again, if we have time at the end, I'll show the DKS and then we'll talk about the market. The way that the SPY sold off last week and then gapped down, the way banks have been acting all year. Again, you're not going to have the SPY. You're not going to have the SPY make brand new all-time highs and go up and continue higher without the financials. The financials do not look good. They have not looked good this entire year of 2023. In fact, I'm shocked, surprised even, as much of a rally that we've had this year since January without the financials. The financials look terrible and banks still could continue to go under. I was on Fox News Labor Day and I talked about this and we talked about it. Again, whatever the Fed decides to do has nothing to do with whatever's gonna happen with banks because if the Fed decides to continue to raise rates, then there will be more banks that go under. We will know more next week. Next week could be a great week, quite frankly, to trade. But we'll see. Anyways, getting back to the checklist, the checklist is a system, it's a trading system, and it's really based on common sense. It's based on common sense, think about it. How do you make money in the market? You gotta have momentum. You gotta have momentum if you have small size, you gotta have momentum if you have a big size. What else makes sense? If something's falling, you don't wanna buy it, you wanna short it, okay? And again, if panic comes in, that's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to short. So shorting really gives me a niche because people get scared when stocks are falling. And many traders do not know how to short, or if they do, they're shorting the wrong stuff, okay? Or they're shorting stocks at new highs, all right? And even if sometimes that works, it doesn't work consistently, and it's not something that you should do. So again, getting back to what if you have a small account? You can still make money trading and you can learn as you go. And that's important too. Again, I, I, I teach my class in a weekend. It's two days. Are you going to learn everything I know in two days? Yes. Are you going to grasp the concepts perfectly in two days? I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know the people that come to me. I get to know them over time. But learning what to do is a process. It is a process. I started trading in 2008. And then again, it took me three years to figure out my system. And now here it is, it's almost 2024. It's been a long time that I've been doing this. So yes, I'm doing very well and I'm good at what I do, but I've been doing this a long time. And not only that, I've only been doing this. So there is lots of people that are trading out there for a long time or have businesses teaching things. I don't teach a whole gamut. I'm not teaching futures and Forex and this thing and that thing. I'm only doing gaps. I'm only trading gaps. I'm only tr teaching gaps. And I'm only shorting. Occasionally I'll go long, but I'm mostly, mostly shorting. So having the right focus is where it's at as far as I'm concerned, because that's how you're going to get good. And again, like I said, if you want to trade options, you can do that too. Now we did the cues the same day that we did the SPY. The cues are falling today with Apple too. This was back on the 16th as well. I sent this before the SPY trade at 12.51. Usually I send the trades in the morning, even in the pre-market. I sent Oracle out the night before, actually. I sent Oracle the 11th. I saw Oracle at night. I sent the trade at 7 o'clock at night, but you couldn't do it until the next day. So I'll send the trade out when I see it. Most of them are sent in the morning. The cost of this was 290 And again, you could have made 141%. You could have made over 12 grand with an $8,700 risk in 24 hours. You would have had to take the trade, hold it, and exit it then the following day. This was the 360s. Uh, again, closed here, gap down, fell, boom, boom. Nice move down in the SPY, I mean, in the queues and the SPY, but that was the middle of August. And then if you did four contracts, you could have made 1640. Again, a nice straight. Bing, bam, boom, you're in and out. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying about what should you expect as far as turning your money around one to one. Sometimes I get it out of options though from about 50%. Again, right now it's not earnings season. Earnings season doesn't start till October. I may exit things before 100% right now. It is September typically is one of the slower months to train until earnings season begins, which is October. That being said, because of the Fed meeting next week, we could have some days that have tremendous opportunity. So those are the days that you want to be trained and those are the days that you want to be ready to go. But for me, if you come and you want to learn my system, you will learn the 26 points. You will learn the entries I do. You will learn the exits. And then you'll have an opportunity to understand what I do and mostly learn how to short. And that's very important. Again, I started out the lecture today talking about having a positive attitude. 
you have to have a positive attitude. The only way to make it is to have a positive attitude. There's too many people that are trading the market, too many people that are risking money, and there's far too many people that don't know what they're doing than do. So if you learn how to do this, even if it takes you longer than you thought, even if it costs you more money than you thought, or a number of years, and you thought you were gonna do it in a number of weeks, it's worth it if you stick with it and if you stay with it and you stick with it and you continue along and stay focused on becoming successful and getting it because at the end of the day you know there's many people that have a negative attitude about trading they risk money every day they don't know what they're doing and they still keep doing it they put the money into the pot those are the people that we take the money away from and again there were people that went long oracle yesterday and i was shorting it 100 percent. there were traders that were buying that dip in oracle a thousand percent and even last week in the market and we were short so and again learning what to do is extremely important but you do need the proper education you do need a good mentor and again i wish i could say well you could start out right away never take a class take one class learn how to do it you know you know go on from there it's there's a path there's it's usually not that way i moved about a year ago i'm in my new apartment almost a year it took me 29 months to find this apartment realtor 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 showings and realtors and this crazy person and this putting in offers getting the offers rejected 29 months it was crazy i couldn't believe how long it took me to find this place i'm happy i continued along i stayed positive i found my dream apartment i'm here that's how it is when you're trying to make it as a trader I, you know, you may take this class, that class, this class, that class. You meet different people. You find different mentors. It's a process. You know, it's either that or you do what I did, which was a very long road and a very expensive road where you design your own system. You take years of doing it. You figure it out, go through the process, and you do it with your own live money, and you lose until you get it. There's no end in sight when you do that. It took me three years. It could have taken me 10. I'm, I'm lucky it only took me three, but it was really hard three years for me. You know, and, and luckily I can just move forward. But people always say, well, I did this class, I did that class, and I hear people's stories. I get it, but that's the process that people go through in order to make it. And like I said, it's a good example of me trying to find an apartment. It, it's, this is the process. You put in offers, they get rejected, you find another one. Anyways, getting on to risk. It's important not to take risk for risk's sake. It's important to take calculated risk. You need a plan of action to do it. If you come and want to learn my system, you'll learn a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, a big move of the day, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. And again, you will learn a system on how to rate professional bearish gaps. It's a 26 point system. It's one strategy to be successful in the market. It's a two day class. And again, you're gonna learn how to enter the stock as well. But the checklist, the 26 points is really the meat and potatoes of what I do and how to do it. So my class is September 30th and October 1st. It's the end of the month, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Cost of the class is $69.99. And you can email me if you wanna sign up. I'm doing a birthday special this week until uh, Sunday, the 17th, if you wanna sign up. You get the trading room free for one year, the newsletter free for one year. If you sign up by Sunday the 17th, again, the class is at the end of September. This expires on Sunday. And if you're interested in a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com as well. Now, I am going to try to put my charts up. Can you see my charts or do I have to click on and off of it? We can see your charts. Oh, you can. Oh, that worked. Oh, Apple looks good. Okay, let's go to the DKS. Okay, so DKS, we were talking about this was the 22nd. Let me just pull this up here. And then we'll talk about the market really quickly. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. Let's go back here. There it is. So this was what we did. Again, stock closed here, gap down, fell. This was the trade that we did on that day. I don't know why I have the Tesla in there. We haven't done Tesla for a while. That was that. Let's take a look at the market quick. Apple looks good. Apple looks good. Let's look at the SPY. SPY is trying to lift. Let's talk about the SPY. Any questions, plop them in the room and let's look at the market. 
So again, market has two choices. We got three more days left this week. Well, not even, two and a half. So the market may wait. We have some data tomorrow. We have some data Friday. The market may have a reaction or we may wait till next Wednesday. I think we're gonna be range bound here in this market until next Wednesday. Now, next Wednesday may move us out of the range. I, I think that we could have a bearish fall. We'll see if that ends up being true. If we don't, if we end up rallying next week, which would be created by what? The Fed saying that they're going to not raise rates anymore or even lower rates. That would create the market rallying and lifting and continuing to make new highs or try to make new highs, attempt to make new highs, which were back here at the end of 20, no, it was the beginning of 2022. It was the last time we made new highs in the market. So we really tried to do it a couple of weeks ago, and I thought we might. We tried to break out and we failed. I don't think the market has a juice to do it this week, and I don't think it's going to do it next week. And if I had to call this here, I'd say we're range bound until earnings season or we're lower. So that's my take on this. But it's going to be tight trades in here where you're taking the trade and you're getting out fast if you're doing the cues of the spy, unless we drop. I mean, I just think it's so low odds that we rally, but we'll see. Um, you can go wherever you want to go, Terrence. You don't have to go where I go, but this is Orbis, um, which is actually ViewTrade is the broker, but you don't have to go there. You can use, I appear also on Schwab Network. Um, so I don't, you know, work for any broker. I'm not a broker. I don't have an affiliation with any broker. So if you want to go to Schwab too, I appear on their news network with Nicole Petalini's. You can make their charts look like mine as well. I've just used uh, this same charting package for pretty much ever. <laughs> so, you know, when you get into a habit of trading and using the same thing, it's very difficult to change. In fact, the way that I have my chart set up, I've used forever and I've never, ever changed it. I mean, my charts are very clean. Like I have a white background, which is easy for my eyes. And then I have the clock up and I have, you know, just my candles, which I'm using at my candlestick. So again, the focus should be the gap. Um, let me look at, let's pull, we'll pull up uh, Oracle. So you want to, you want to focus on the gap. So if you have too many things, you know, too many indicators, this thing, that thing, the other thing, it's going to take your focus off the gap itself, which is all that you really want to worry about, you know, when you're trading, or at least when I'm doing what I'm doing here. But again, you can see this was the gap from the other day. 9-11 came down in here, fell. 107.30 was the low yesterday. But you can go wherever you want to go. You could make your charts probably look like mine anywhere you want to go, too. Uh, Adobe is the big one, just really quickly, and I'm just watching the clock here. Adobe is out Thursday night. Let's look at this. Adobe is earnings, and Len has earnings Thursday night. So I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Friday, we should have something good. Let's just look at Adobe. Adobe would be a great long. If it wants to gap up, we may be going long Adobe. But if it falls and it gaps down, I'll rate it. We'll see where it's at. I can, I'm just looking at this here right now. Adobe would be a better long. Adobe over 600, but it'll just skyrocket like a crazy person. I don't know if it does that. I have no idea what the earnings say, but I'll be, I would prefer Adobe to be a long, and this I would go long, and Adobe over 600 would be a great trade. It would be a great long. Adobe's trying to make a comeback here. Adobe looks better than the market, actually. This looks better than a lot of things. Looks better than Apple. But, it, it, you know, again, I do prefer to short. But just, just just looking at Adobe here, I'm like, oh, this is really, would be a much better long. A quick look at Len. Any other questions from anybody? So it's been, it's been an interesting year to trade. It's been a, it's been a, it, again, we, so, so 2022, just recap here, market. 2022 was a fabulous year to short. Why? The market kept falling. I mean, again, there was economic data that was coming out and we fell and they kept bumping up rates. January this year was shocked. I mean, I, I did not read the market correct in January. I thought we were going to fall. We rallied. I was shocked. We have not broken the low for the year. We could. We still could. We still have time to do it. We might. I don't know. I don't think we make new highs this year. I could be wrong. We'll see. Next week is very important for the Fed and for the market. But anyways, I was shocked in January. For the rest of the year, though, I really was very focused on reading the market to see really where we would go. And I, I, I just don't think we make new highs this year. 
But again, the economic data like today is starting to show, again, these things are all cyclical. They're all in the past. When they give these numbers are things that happened in the past. Mortgage numbers came in, they dropped. Applications dropped. We're in a rising interest rate environment. We talked about inflation, shrinkflation. All these things are going to take effect. When I was on Fox, I said, well, people say we're in a recession. We're not a recession. I was on with Charles Payne. I thought about it afterwards in the segment, and I thought, I think, and then again, I was shopping every week, and I said, I think, I think we're in a mild recession. If, I, if, I ha if, I, if someone forced me to make a call, I'd say, I think we're actually, next time I'm on Fox, I think we're in a mild recession. And, and, and we could prevent a further recession if the Fed stops raising rates or lowers them. I don't know if they're going to take that stance. If they continue raising rates, my, my take is that we're going to go into a recession, a hard recession, a real recession, a recession that everyone will say is a recession, and I don't know what happens to the economy. And going into an election year, again, that's not good for the incumbent. Let's look at Len really quickly here. This is Len, it's Thursday night. Len, I would love to short Len, but again, I don't know what Len's going to do. Len looks like a good short if it gaps down and adobe looks like a good um long if it gaps up uh so again really quickly here here's my information if you're interested or you want a trial email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com or if you have any questions thank you so much for having me john i appreciate it and i did not recognize you in that videos because you didn't have a hat on i think that your hat is your signature look john <laughs> for future.